Hey, what's up? Good morning. It's Thursday, I believe. All my days are kind of one. And uh, we have another absolute incredible wrestler and wrestling mind and wrestling coach uh, from the West Coast, you know, representing the West Side. And he's out in California. It's head coach Manny Rivera. Uh, he's the head coach at Cal State Bakersfield. Uh, we've had his compadre Lightning Luke on before. And uh, he was a three-time NCAA qualifier at the University of Minnesota and part of their 2007 national championship team. Uh, he was also a California high school state placer and a national champ in high school, amongst many other accolades. Uh, like most wrestlers we have on, there's a lot more we can talk about, but I think that's good enough. That's pretty damn good in my eyes. So uh, Coach Manny Rivera, thanks so much for coming on, buddy. Uh, I know you're back home, back on the West Coast the last three or four years. And how are things going, first of all? And how have you kind of been effective through this this pandemic? Yeah, well, thanks thanks for having me. Uh, I'm very, very excited to be on. So um, as far as the, the pandemic, I think I'm just like everyone else here, just trying to do the most I can with the given situation. Um, you know, we, we haven't been able to get back in our wrestling room uh, since March. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you just got to focus on everything else and, you know, really got to practice what we preach to our guys and just uh, worry about what we can control and do that as best we can. And right now that's been some recruiting. That's been some fundraising and, you know, trying to challenge our guys to, to do as much as they can on their own. Right. Because That's the reality right now is a great opportunity for, uh, independent wrestlers to to really make some gains and the guys who maybe aren't so independent are probably going to fall behind right and, uh that's been the challenge is what, what are you going to do now that you're on your own right how much can you do how much can you get better so um that's that's been the focus and you know been been um at home a lot a lot more than i'm used to uh getting probably some cabin fever missing wrestling and, and ready to get back as soon as we can uh, yeah i gotta imagine what have you been uh what have you been telling your guys to do just to stay ready, just stay in shape, physical fitness? Uh, yeah, you know, and, and some of them have uh, more access to things than others. Depends, you know, where they're at, who they are. I, get, I had one of my guys who, uh, uh, he's from Sacramento, and that's probably about, you know, maybe just under four hours away. And he had a, a mat from when he was uh, in high school growing up in his garage. He drove up to Sacramento to get that little old garage mat through in his garage here in Bakersfield so he can wrestle his roommate, you know? So, uh, you know, again, guys have to figure things out. They got to be a little more creative. And, you know, for some guys, they have access to, to weights. Um, they have access to different things at home. Um, so a uh, little bit different for everyone, but uh, that's been a part of it is just overcoming those, those obstacles and, and getting creative. And, you know, you can get better no matter what you have at your disposal. I mean, I, I told them, you can go to a, to a little city park and find a sand pit and you can do just about every wrestling skill there is in sand, you know, sure. if you really want to, you know, you can do penetration steps. You can, you know, you can wrestle a full match in sand if you really want. So, um, you know, if, if you're not getting better, it's just cause you're not trying hard enough really. Right. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, so first of all, talk about the last three or four years being back home on the West coast. How's that felt? being close to mom and the family or what? Yeah, yeah. Right now? It's been good to be back in California, you know. Um, it's not quite uh, where I grew up, but it's it's pretty dang close. Um, you know, Bakersfield's a great town, so it's great to be back here. Um, you know, i am always been a proud Californian, so to come back and, and take over a program like Cal State Bakersfield that has uh, an incredible history. Um, it has been an, an honor, really. And we have some great alumni. We've had some amazing wrestlers come through here. So just to be a part of that history is is pretty humbling. Um, you know, and even even some great coaches have been here. So um, you know, I, there's been some some guys that came through here before me that have been uh, great coaches. Joe C, T.J. Kerr, you know, even even Coach Mendoza, who was here as I. I took over for as he left. Um, he he did a great job here, so um, it's it's uh, a, a good place to to coach. I'm glad to be back on the West Coast. The the winters are very very nice. You know we're 
shoot, we're doing dual meets outside in February, and I don't know if many other places can do that, right? That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, so let's talk about the program. Obviously, it's a program that, uh, you know, was on the brink of being cut, and uh, you guys kind of got together and said, well, if we can – if we can fund it, can we keep it? And uh, and from there, the rest is history. Now, every year, you guys kind of, in order to, to stay alive, you got to fund it yourself, right? Yeah, so fundraising is is really the name of the game for our program. And I guess a, a little bit of the history on that, it was in 2010, um, where there, we had that little bit of a crash in the economy. And, you know, it, it hurt a lot of people and some people more than others and some some organizations and institutions more than others and the Cal State system was a system that got hit, hit pretty hard so they were trying to make some some significant cuts and um, in 2010 they cut wrestling along with uh, it was tennis and I believe uh, golf so I think they cut uh, four sports men's women's golf and then they cut uh, tennis and wrestling and um, you know, uh, wrestling, like I said, there's just uh, uh, an incredible tradition here. It's a wrestling town. So, you know, right away, the, the wrestling community was just like not a chance. Right? Uh, there's no way you're cutting wrestling. And, uh, you know, uh, after having meetings and talks with the president of the university and getting him to agree to allow the wrestling community and supporters and, and alumni to raise money to save the program, um, you know, they went out and that's when uh, uh, Coach Mike Mendoza was basically at the lead of just getting that started and, and really uh, raising that initial amount of money. Um, and, you know, I, I credit a lot of what we do today to, to Coach Mendoza because his the foundation he says when it comes to that fundraising is, is crazy because I, I couldn't imagine just trying to do that from scratch. Right. I came in, um, you know, after he was here for about six, seven years. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of work, but I, I, I try to think back, man, if I was doing this from scratch, um, it'd be a lot harder. So, um, you know, at this point, it's almost a little bit like clockwork, at least from our local supporters. Anytime we do an event, they're, they're ready to, to help out, right? No matter what we do, um, you know, they know, hey, all right, it's time to, to help out the wrestling program. And, you know, it kind of seemed in, in my four years here, we've done different things. We always try different things. And, no matter what it is, um, they're ready to chip in. So kind of got, got, he got them in the habit of, of helping us. So, Yeah, and uh, what's kind of been the mode of fundraising? Well, uh, the, the big one we got going on right now, and it's been probably our, our biggest fundraiser the last three years, our car raffle. Um, we got our riding style car raffle. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I could take credit for this idea, but it was one of my, my supporters, our boosters here, uh, he just came to me one, one day and he goes, hey, I want to raffle off a car. And I said, sounds, sounds great. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, he had a good connection over at the Infinity of Bakersfield. And we raffle off an Infinity. Um, and the raffle's pretty – or the fundraiser's pretty simple. Um, you know, we only sell 1,000 tickets at 100 bucks. Um, so, you know, uh, you do some quick math. You know, you, you can see we can raise a, a hundred grand – pretty quick for our, pro our program, which is a significant amount of money. And uh, to be quite honest, it's a big chunk of, you know, what we operate on uh, yearly. So, um, you know, you, you do the, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, you do the, uh, the, the math of a hundred grand, I would say that um, ends up being about a third of our, our budget of what we operate on. So, um, it's a big chunk. Um, it, you know, I always tell people not, not only are you helping our program, you know, obviously a uh, hundred dollars isn't a little bit of money, but um, it goes a long way for us. And you know, you're, you're trying to really make an impact on the wrestling program for us. A hundred dollars goes a long way. You know, I, I know um, you see the, the leading programs, your Penn States, your Iowa's, they have a ton of supporters um, and, and that's great. You know, they've earned that, but <laughs> A hundred bucks to us goes a lot further than a hundred bucks to them, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and, uh, are, are they doing? Are they doing where you you're actually getting the car, or are they raffling like a lease? No, so so a little bit more about the car. Uh, the Infinity, it's a brand new 2020 Infinity. Um, it's like a 250. It's a very nice car. I actually got to test drive it. It's an incredible car, and the car is all yours. 
Um, no, no one year lease. It's yours for forever. You can, you can. So we've done it twice before. First gentleman who wanted donated it back to the program. So, um, you know, it helped us cover the expense of what it costs us to get the car from uh, the dealership. Um, the second gentleman kept it and what he did is he sold it to his neighbor. So he actually <laughs> didn't like drive it. He just flipped it and made some cash, but <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's all yours. I mean, you know, there's, there's some taxes to pay and, and all that. And obviously if say you're from Florida, I mean, getting the car to Florida might, might be a little bit more challenging, but, um, you know, the, the car is yours to do with what you need and you don't need to be present to win it. Um, you know, you can, you can request a ticket online at bakersfieldwrestling.com and, you know, a hundred dollars to help out a, a program and, you know, give yourself a chance at a new car isn't a bad deal, you know? Yeah, and no, please, when we get done here, um, please go in and put the link and, and do all that stuff on here and then <clears throat> and then take that and, and share it through all your wrestling channels so that uh, people can can see the interview and kind of do that and, and we'll get it going. I don't I don't think I'm in a, a California wrestling room, but I'm, I, I'll share I always share this with like wrestlers only and places like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, please make sure you get in there and do all that. Uh, talk about, uh, I mean, obviously you got the car. I'm sure they do some sort of consignment, right? You got to pay whatever their invoice is. And then the rest is funds to the program, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I've operated yeah. dealerships for a long time. So I managed and uh, I spent 20 years in the car business. So. Uh, we've done, we did a lot of that stuff, you know, the par threes, the golf tournaments. The yeah. Stuff. So that's cool. So um, you had mentioned your alumni, talk about your alumni relationships and what it means to have built a, a huge alumni following there and what that does to give back to the program as well. Yeah, we're, we're pretty lucky. We, we have um, some incredible <clears throat> alumni. Uh, I, I haven't been at a program where the alumni just, they really feel strongly and passionate about um, our wrestling team years after they've graduated. Um, it, it, you know, I think the, probably the main thing that sticks out to show that is on any given day, you can walk into our wrestling room and we'll have, you know, two to three alumni just stopping in to either work out, roll around with our guys or um, just say hi or whatever, you know, they, they just like being involved and, uh, you know, more than anywhere is just, I, I, I don't see alumni just stopping in just like that, you know, and try to try to get in there. Um, you know, some places for sure have that, but um, this is just a lot of times unsolicited. I mean, just they drop in, it's like, hey, what's going on? And you know, they're, they're awesome. And, um, you know, it, we got a, an incredible history, um, you know, for, for even being such a young school and wrestling program, I think the first year – we had wrestling at Cal State Bakersfield was in 1972. Um, and, uh, you know, from 1972 to, to now, you know, we, we've had, uh, you know, something, it was seven national champions and uh, a couple of over two time champions and had 45 division one All Americans, um, you know, finished in the top 10 like nine times in division one tournament. So, um, it, it's a, a crazy amount of history, just like a, we've had Cal State Bakersfield represented in the world in the Olympic championships like 20 times, 20 different alumni. So, um, you know, you, you get some names going way back. If you're a wrestling historian, some guys like John Azevedo and Joe Gonzalez and uh, Tim Vanny, who made like seven different world and Olympic teams. And um, there, there's a ton of history there, um, you know, and that probably our, our most notable guy is uh, Stephen Neal. Uh, you know, Stephen Neal was a uh, four-time All-American here, two-time champion, a Hodge Trophy winner, uh, world champion. Uh, and then uh, probably the most incredible thing is we, we don't have football here at Cal State Bakersfield, so he didn't play football. He wasn't like a dual sport athlete or, or anything. And then went on and played for the Patriots for nine seasons and won three Super Bowls. <laughs> so <laughs> And never even played football. No, I never played football in college. He played in high school, but, you know, I, there's not many guys who play in the NFL that never played college ball, right? That's probably pretty unheard of. Well, yeah, I mean, and, yeah, so all you football players, make sure you don't wrestle. 
right? I mean, hey, it's possible, right? <laughs> yeah, seems like it helps. So, so, uh, so the alumni, the alumni are great. I mean, you know, they're just passionate about the program. Man, that's great. And so, talk about. I know uh, you've got to do some media marketing. What What are some What are some places where uh, people can find Cal State Bakersfield? Uh, what are some things you do social media wise that people can get involved with? Yeah, just you know, follow us on our. We have fa- we have a Facebook page. We have a, a Twitter. We have an Instagram. Um, you know, I'm trying to. I'm probably going to screw up the exact uh, handles or whatever, but you know, they're at like CSUV wrestling or something like that. I'm sure you'll find it. Just try to hit uh, CSUV wrestling. It'll come up something of that nature. Um, I'm, I'm not super savvy on all those little details. I, I, I have done my best to, to get better at social media and promote our program, but uh, you know, coach lightning Luke, he's, he's a man at that stuff. He's always thinking about, um, doing different things on there and promoting our, our wrestling program. So I'm glad, I'm glad we have him because he does a much better job than I do. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. It's like, um, for me, my social media ambition stopped at like MySpace. So <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago. yeah, so, you know, it almost passed me up because I'm not, I'm not that old, but it, I feel like social media passed me up. So, you know, I, I know how to post, but you know, talk about all those little handles and all that. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not sure what, what they are. But uh, yeah, follow us. And, we, you know, like everyone else, we, we try to be creative on there and promote our program. And, you know, uh, I like to think I have a good sense of humor. So anytime we can we can put something out that, that can get people uh, to laugh and give them a chuckle, uh, you know, makes me happy. So, um, you know, for, for uh, a free platform, you got to really take advantage of that, right? So... Yeah, for sure. And uh, um, so I'd imagine that throughout the year, you guys are doing like different contests, different things at the at the matches and uh, different ways to make it fun and, and also, you know, fundraise. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, interaction is probably the, the biggest thing you try to, to get, you know, you can put stuff up, but when you can get some interaction out of people, um, you know, you do, do giveaways or, um, you know, you try to do trivia or things like that. Um, you, you seem to really engage your fans and anything you can think of that's going to be interactive too goes a long way. Yeah, it uh, seems like it's fun. So, um, man, so why, why Cal State? If, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a recruit out there and I'm, I'm looking to wrestle Division One, and, and uh, I've got different programs looking at me and you happen to be one of them, uh, why do I say, hey, I want to go? I want to go wrestle for Manny and and Lightning Luke and 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 be at Cal State. Well, uh, I'll keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, for us right now, our goal is to to really be the the bridge back to uh, the days where we were having national champions, and you know, we're looking for guys who are really going to be committed to the hard work it takes. Right, it's not going to be easy for us, but. Um, you're going to have a program, you're going to have coaches, you're going to have teammates that we're all committed to being the very best, right? And, and to me, um, obviously, there's always more thought to it, but it just comes, in, comes down to putting in the time and putting in the hard work. Um, I, I'm, I'm confident that, you know, I, I won't be outworked, you know. As a coach, I won't be outworked. And, um, and you know, it comes with a job, right? I, I, I guarantee you most wrestling coaches are putting in a lot of hours, but um, I don't, I'm not going to fall behind. I know that. And, you know, you want to be around people who are going to do everything they can, absolutely they can in their power to, to be the very best. This is your place. Right? And, I, and I really mean that, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't sell a lot of like, you know, we, we have this or that. I, I like selling who we are and what we're about. And, you know, you're going to get some hardworking people around who are really committed right? and truly committed to, to being the best. And uh, um, talk about uh, I'm, I'm a recruit's parent, and, and I want to make sure that not only is he uh, getting a good wrestling experience, but that you're actually being the parent away from home and making sure that, that academically you're motivating him and keeping him focused there. What, what do you guys do uh, in that aspect? Yeah, so um, our guys are pretty fortunate. We have, we have a, a lot of resources for them academically. We have a 
Our, our Kegley Center is basically our academic support center. So we have a, a whole facility dedicated to our student athlete success. Um, so basically from the second they sign on with us and they get admitted to Cal State Bakersfield, um, we have a, a group of advisors and people over there who will, it's their sole job to make sure our guys get taken care of from the second they get here to the second they graduate, right? And, and all the little million things that include, you know, from registering to classes or even before that, your orientation, you know, your freshman orientation, then you got to register for classes. And then, um, you know, you, you got to, if you need tutors, they're going to set you up with their tutors. And, you know, we have a computer lab set up for them. And, you know, if there's any uh, struggles in between or there are advisors there to help them navigate all of that. And, you know, really a big part of it is catching it early on, right? And uh, not letting the kid come two weeks before the semester is over and saying, I'm struggling with the class. And you're like, I mean, what, what can we do now, right? You want to catch it two weeks in <laughs> to the semester and, and set up a plan to get them to, to improve. And, um, you know, we just have a group of people who, who are there for those things. And, um, you know, these guys are, are pretty fortunate. And, you know, and, you know, it's a, it's a priority to, to our coaching staff. So I think that's the biggest thing. If we don't care, they probably won't care. Um, yeah. And, uh, so the most important thing is uh, who's got the best hospitality room in the country? Yes. The Roadrunner open. Um, well, who knows what's going on this year, but it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, has the best hospitality room in the country. <laughs> um, authentic Mexican food. Um, you know, we, we have pozole, enchiladas, we'll do tacos, we'll do all kinds of things, and uh, it really is great food. Um, have, have only had compliments. Um, I think uh, the coaches now, we, we've had the Roadrunner Open in, in Bakersfield the last uh, three years, and um, have, have had a lot of compliments. I mean, I guess if I put it on Yelp, I, I, could, I feel pretty confident we'd get five stars on Yelp, so... <laughs> That's that good old mama home cooking. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But my, my, my mother does a lot of cooking. And then, uh, you know, a lot of mothers on, on the team help out. So you can't be that authentic. And, how, and uh, how can schools get involved and get invited? and, and, and uh, Just re reach out. You know, um, you know, we're always looking to bring college teams in to wrestle. We try to make it a pretty competitive open. Uh, this past year, um, who do we have in Columbia came in from New York. And then we had um, – you know, we had another oh, Gardner Webb came in from North Carolina and previous years we've had Maryland and Illinois come through North Dakota state. So we, you know, we get uh, a lot of the regional teams. We get a lot of the California teams and then even, uh, you know, we'll get some red shirts from Arizona state from Oregon state. And then, uh, you know, what, what I, I always kind of got to focus on is recruiting these out of state teams from different regions is a little bit requires more work. So those are the guys that need to know uh, we got the best hospitality room in the country. Awesome, man. So uh, best wrestler you faced in your career? Ooh, best wrestler I faced in my career um, in a match, I, I'm, I'm guessing you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think you were in the room with. Yeah. I was, I've practiced with some great guys too. So, but in a match, I wrestled a couple national champions. Um, uh, Jaggers, Ohio State, Kellen Russell, Michigan. Um, I, I wrestled with those guys. They ended up being a couple couple time champions. Um, actually, you know who probably kicked my butt the worst was uh, Gallic, Iowa State, the the older one. I, I kind of forget Nick and Nate, which one's which, but uh, I always mix up their names. But the older one, man, he could just he could just put it on me. It was crazy how much <laughs> he was in the. <laughs> That's funny, and uh, man, uh, biggest win. Uh, biggest win. I've had some some good wins. Um, you know, I, I did beat the uh, Jaggers once. I beat I did beat Kellen Russell once. Um, you know, beat some other pretty tough guys. Uh, you know, wrestling in the Big Ten, you get those opportunities a lot. So I was able to to stake some good wins over the years. And those are probably two two national champions is pretty good to beat. What weight? Uh, what weight were you? One hundred forty one. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I've talked to a couple one twenty fivers the last couple of weeks and. Man, that's a buzzsaw right now. Yeah, yeah. Those lightweights are crazy. They're so stacked. <laughs> Man. All right, I'm going to go into my 10 questions. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Steph or LeBron? Steph. Hollywood sign or Griffith Observatory? Observatory. 
Santa Monica Pier or Sunset Boulevard? Pier. The LA Zoo or the Aquarium of the Pacific? Uh, LA Zoo. Hollywood Boulevard, Rodeo Drive. Mm, that's a tough one. Rodeo. All right. Dodger Stadium or the Rose Bowl? Dodger Stadium. How do you need to finish that one all the way? <laughs> Huge Dodger fan. Dodger Stadium. Get a Dodger dog. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chinatown or Little Tokyo? Ooh, Chinatown. All right. Now, two big time foods in, in LA Chinese food or Korean food? Korean, Korean barbecue. So good. All right. I hope I do this right. There's two like little Mexican taco places I read about in LA Guisados or Mexicali taco? Uh, Mexicali taco. I haven't had Guisados. So it's probably really good. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing. I I'm guessing it's just great. So. <laughs> All right, football, Rams or Chargers? Ah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm almost neither, you know. It, it, I'll elaborate a little bit. Um, we went so long without a football team in L.A. that now I just feel like it's hard to cheer for any team, you know, especially Chargers is even harder because they were in San Diego for so long and they're normally a rival. So now it's like you cheer against San Diego your whole life and now, like, you have a team and it's, that's, that's tough and – Rams, we had the Rams when I was really young, Rams and Raiders, they both left. And now Rams came back. And I guess, I guess if I had to choose Rams just because they were an LA team at one point. But. Do people in LA still, still have that, that, uh, that Raider blood? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, people love the Raiders and, um, you know, if anything, <laughs> LA is probably more of a Raiders town, but um, for me, it, it's just like we didn't have a team for so long that, to be honest, I kind of lost touch with football. You know, yeah, I don't blame you. Has it? Uh, what's the what's the tide with uh, the two basketball teams, man? It's kind of yeah, it's big brother, little brother. You know, Lakers just rule rule LA for basketball, and then you know every now and then the Clippers have a decent team. But you know, what, what's a good season for the Clippers is normally a disappointing season for the Lakers. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like they're both doing doing pretty good now. It'd be cool to see them. Uh, what would, they would have to meet in the conference finals, right? They're both yeah, the Western, the Western final. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be cool for LA, huh? That'd be fun. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Those superstars on the uh, hey, anything right now, sports wise, is is doing a good thing, man. The UFC has really kept us involved, and then we had that cool little wrestling on the rooftop this weekend. That was fun. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Man, you know, I'm glad it's back. And it just makes me miss wrestling so much. It's like, man, I can't wait to get back. Man, I'd imagine like most coaches I talk to, you probably just miss looking over your shoulder and seeing the kids there doing homework or hanging out or just BSing or whatever. Yeah, all, all of it. You know, you just, you know, you do know how much time you spend with them, but being away from them, it's like, you don't realize how much time you actually spend with them. Like, you know, I know it's every day, but man, I haven't, haven't been in the room with them in you know, a few months. And it's like, man. And I could imagine, I'd imagine you still roll a little bit with them, right? Yeah. Try to get in there as much as I can. And, you know, um, try to really, um, as, as much as I can, big brother, these guys, right. And yeah. I don't know how much longer I can do that, but I'll keep doing it till I can. <laughs> That's for sure. Perfect. Well, hey, man, I hope, like I tell everybody, I hope one day on the other side of this, I can do a little traveling and, and get out to see everybody and, and do these kind of shows right in your room and, and uh, have a good time. And please feel free to jump on the Ward Wrestling Live room and, and post all your fundraiser stuff in the links and share it. And then in the group, Ward Wrestling Live Exchange, it's just a small group I just started. Uh, you'll see it there. Please feel free to join that and post your stuff in there as well and uh, share with whatever platform feel free and everybody can see i got the road runners right there right there rowdy we got rowdy right over your left shoulder and uh tell lightning luke smith i said thank you for inviting you on here that's awesome good to meet you and uh please feel free to share my link with any wrestlers wrestling coaches referees anybody with a good story ufc mma a 10 year old or an 80 year old you know somebody that wants to talk they're welcome on the show all right. Well, hey, I appreciate it again. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You have a wonderful day.